<clears throat> Mixing. Mixing beats, really important. Well, today I'm gonna teach you five mixing tips which will literally make your life a lot easier. Number one, sound selection. You probably hear this a lot, but sound selection is one of the most important things when it comes to achieving a high quality mix. You can find millions of sound kits, drum kits, producer kits all online, but sadly, most of them are crap. So what you can do, for example, is go to the website of Cymatics. They have tons of high quality samples, free or paid, which you can drag and drop into your project. Or maybe consider a Splice subscription, where you can download a lot of sounds which you can use for your beats. Or just do some research for yourself, I'm sure you'll find something. So I created this beat loop using my favorite drum samples. Listen up. Now that sounds really cool, but the most important thing next to sound selection is leveling your sounds. Leveling is literally 90% of your mixing process. When you've got the right mixing levels to your sounds, your mix is actually almost done. Now I like to start out by using the channel volume knob. This one adjusts the volume of your sound before it's sent over to the mixer. Before we start leveling the sounds, we're gonna enable the audio meter. Click on the master track and go to the effect rack. Then choose fruity dB meter. That will open a window where you can see how loud your sound is playing. The first sound I'm gonna level is my kick drum, around minus 6 dB. Of course, numbers don't mean anything when it doesn't sound good, so make sure you've got the right sample. Next, I like my snare to peak around minus 8 to minus 6. Again, this really depends on what sound I'm using. And then when I'm done leveling my drums, I usually level my melody until it blends with the drum pattern. And that sounds amazing. To give your beat more space, you can always use some panning for certain sounds. You can pan the percussion to the left or the right. Same for the open hi-hat. You can even automate the panning of your closed hi-hat to make it sound like it's moving. You can do whatever you like. Creative freedom. Next, we're gonna talk a bit about EQing. With an EQ, you can simply boost or cut specific frequencies. For example, these low piano notes are kind of interfering with my kick drum. So to fix that, we're gonna route the sound to mixer track number one, for example. You can then call it low piano and perhaps give it a Color. Then select that mixer track and go to the effects rack. Click on a slot and select the parametric EQ2. Now here you can see the frequency spectrum of the piano. Low frequencies on the left, highs on the right and the mids in the middle. The kick also has a lot going on in the lower frequencies and that is why they're clashing with each other. Right click on the first band, type and select high pass. Now drag the band to the right and that will cut away the low frequencies. But don't overdo this because this will make your piano sound like it's lifeless or flat. You can also boost the high frequencies to get more clearance from your melody for example example. Now let's move on to the fourth mixing trick of the day and that's using buses. Let's create one together. Open up the mixer track and select a random track. Right click it and call it for example reverb bus. Let's make it the color black. Head over to the effects rack and select fruity reverb 2. Set the dry signal to 0 and the wet signal to 100. That way you get the full reverb effect. As you can see all the drum sounds are routed to a track. Instead of putting reverb on all of them individually you can simply select your mixer and click on this little arrow here. This will route your sound through that reverb bus. You can adjust how much you want the effect to work by dragging this knob to the left or the right. Don't put too much on your sound, instead use a subtle amount of reverb. Oh, and this will also save you a lot of CPU. By the way, if you want to see a video about how to make FL Studio faster, definitely let me know. The fifth and final trick of the day is going to be the kick and 808 sidechaining. But Timon, what is sidechaining? Well, let me explain with a cool animation. Now, when you're playing two sounds at the same time, which have the same frequencies, for example, a kick and an 808, you're actually making the sounds clash and that will make your mix sound muddy. To fix that, we're going to sidechain the sound. Basically what we're doing is we're making the volume of the 808 duck at the moment that the kick starts playing. That way the kick will punch through your bass. It's a mixing technique that people have been using for quite some time now and is still being used every day. To do this in FL Studio, you want to route your kick and 808 to a mixer track. Then of course always label your sounds that will save your life when you're working on bigger projects. Select the kick and right click on the 808. Then select sidechain to this track. Now select the 808 and go to the effects rack. Find the fruity limiter effect and when it's open click on the compressor. Press the space bar on your keyboard to make the kick and 808 play so that we can listen while tweaking the compressor. Right click on the sidechain list and select your kick. Drag your ratio all the way to the right and increase the attack just a little bit. You can always tweak the attack and release afterwards. Now what I like to do is to pull the threshold down to zero and from there slowly increase it until it sounds good.
you can visually see how much sound there's being cut from the 808 to make space for the kick. Damn it, I knew I shouldn't have spent so much time on that animation. But anyway, use these five mixing tricks to your advantage and I guarantee you, your mixes will sound better. Now hit that like button if you learned something new today and don't forget to subscribe because we want this channel to take off. And now I'm going. Goodbye. See you. Ciao.